Performing Arts Commission is all the members of the commission are active artists from different towns throughout the county. So it's just been really exciting to watch that organization grow and to go to the different events in places like Washougal and other places that where exciting things are happening around the county and see the good work that these people do in their towns as well. So uh, really thank you to all of you in the Clark County Arts Commission for the support you've shown for me and, and our programs. Um, okay, so now we're going to uh, jump back into the open mic, and the first person on the open mic for the second half is Greg Bai. So give him a warm up. Yeah. Let's see, can you hear me? Um, I'd like to begin um, with a revision of a poet I read, a poem I read the last time I was here in August, in memory of Scott Kilman, rendered in traditional behind the podium style. I really don't care about Teresa of Avila, or Scott Kelman for that matter. <laughs> I do care about the performance you prepared, because you care about them. There are no do-overs in improv. This is not therapy. It is you and your performance. Deliberation. Check it out. Find the space to create. Empathy. Yield. Do not act on your first thought. When you move, the process starts again. Check it out. Find space to create. Empathy. Yield. Have all the thoughts you want. Don't act on your first one. Sound and movement. Bah, bah, bah. Find your center. Bah. <laughs> Riff. The way we generate script, dialogue and narrative. Energy and rhythm think jazz. Generate poetry. To teach, to delight, to move. Pretty words strung together. Images fall out. Generate rhythms. Images emerge. Word begets image. Poetry emerge. Poetry, poetry. Don't fear the words. Generate the rhythms. Images emerge. Behold the rhythms. Performance emerge. Yeah. Um, now I'd like to read a couple of poems by two local women poets. Local meaning Portland. Um, one ancient and one still very much with us. The ancient one is Hazel Hall, who... I'm sure most of you are somewhat familiar with. An invalid confined to a second story room of a house in northwest Portland um, um, who wrote poems about her needlework, the people who walked the streets below her home on 52 Lucretia Street, and her existential condition. Here is a brief introduction um, to um, Hall's selected poems by, uh, written by Beth Bentley. Um, Hall's Hazel Hall's lifespan, 1886 to 1924, places her in a group named Interim Poets by Zatarenska and Gregory in their History of American Poetry from 1900 to 1940. Such poets as Lizette Woodworth Reese, Adelaide Crapsey, Louise Grenet, and Sarah Tisdale fall into this category. Sometimes called Georgians, these poets wrote in traditional modes heavily dependent on quatrains and hymn book uh, metrics. But even though Hall's poetry places her among these refined and somewhat limited poets, um, her subject matter, strength of character, and realism advance her into more modern company. Faced with the realities of illness, pain, poverty, and loneliness, Hall responded not with the sentimentality typical of her generation, but with irony and detachment. She succumbed neither to the easy optimism and religious bromides of the Georgians, nor to the more sophisticated and often heavy-handed worldliness of such poets as Eleanor Wiley and Edna St. Vincent Millay. And this is the first edition book. <laughs> uh, this is called uh, For a Woman Grown Cold. Uh, Far as near things are when sleep blows over you like blackened sand. Is the hot pan the hot pain you thought to keep warm against your hand? Grief left you colorless as stone. You lie beneath night's splintering wave. That once you broke your heart upon, dispassionate as in a grave. You rise to face the sun and toss the pleasure of it from your eyes. Nor will you think of dawn across, your mouth sweet with other skies. You feel your thin blood pulsing where it moves unheededly as rain. Content to find the chill breath there, cold is easier than pain. Okay, and um, the modern local woman poet is Carol Trevor, a published poet 
Carol is also a visual artist who taught for several years at Portland Community College. Such subjects as paste up and, um, and other graphic arts. In full disclosure, Carol is my aunt. <laughs> my childhood memories are filled with fun times visiting her and her family at the house on 36th and Washington in the Belmont neighborhood. Lots of fun for all the siblings, cousins, and neighbor kids. Quite often I would leave with my face painted like a vaudeville performer. And most of all, and it was great food and she's a marvelous cook, and most of all I remember stories about Carol and her family um, back in England during World War II. Everyone in the air raid shelter. Everyone except Uncle Jim, who was a home defense uh, bomb monitor. He, he stayed outside and chart where the bombs landed. Except once when a bomb landed very close and he dove headfirst in the, sh in the shelter among everyone else. Okay, and this one's called View from Below, Carol Trevor. When my child world is filled with lesser fantasies and hope, my mother was a magician who could make the serpents I wrestled release their hold on me. I learned from her, learned well, that even last year's doll can be transformed through the miracle of different colored wigs, black and blonde, a new dress sewn of multi-layered white muslin, trimmed with velvet ribbon, everything of concern in our universe she could fix, except father. Even mother's magic had its limits. Thank you. Thank you for that, Craig. I think a lot about how our, you know, we have to we have to write our own cultural history and we have to keep our cultural history alive. We can't uh, we can't count on other people uh, noticing or doing those things. And so I really appreciate that you read those poems by those other folks and just got those names out into the air. I wasn't I didn't really know about Hazel Hall. So thank you so much for for uh, doing that on their behalf and for our benefit. I appreciate it. Okay, and next we are going to hear from Christine Lamb-White. Welcome her to...